We'll handle the suspension in the final phase of our Project Low Budget Bird right now on Horsepower TV. Today on Horsepower TV, we'll handle the handling needs of our Project Budget Bird. With new control arms, performance springs, a solid new track bar, gas shocks, sway bar, and more. We'll show you a brake upgrade with slotted rotors and new pads, plus a new way to get eye-grabbing graphics with little money and no paint. So hang on for Horsepower TV. Hi, welcome to Horsepower TV, where today we got a great pair of Pontiacs in the shop. If you've been watching lately, you know about this 91 Firebird we've been working on. But my question is, what do you got here? Well, it's a tricked out Grand Prix with a supercharger and a first rate flame job that's guaranteed to attract a crowd on any cruise night. Now, later we'll show you how to add graphics to your machine without busting your budget. But hey, first things first. That's right. We've got more of our project low budget bird. Remember, we're trying to build it on a $10,000 budget, including the price of the car. Now, to bring you up to date, we first did a high-tech tune-up with a new manifold, ignition upgrade, underdrive pulleys, and computer chip. Then we followed that up by installing a new set of headers, cat-back exhaust, and a catalytic converter. The payoff was almost 40 more horsepower at the rear wheel on our dyno jet. Of course, now that it's got its horsepower, it's time to turn our attention to its handling. The Firebird doesn't exactly roll over on its door handles through the corners, but there's still plenty of room for improvement, and we've got plenty of handling hardware to help us cut those corners without blowing our budget. We'll first attack the rear end with a set of these Eibach Lakewood springs, some Bilstein gas shocks, plus lower control arms and track bar from Edelbrock. Then we're going to add a rear sway bar from Performance Suspension Technologies. Now, the cost of all of this hardware, both front and rear, is about 1100 bucks, and you can plan on spending the better part of a weekend getting it all bolted up. Oh, we better get that lift up to your working height. Come on. Man, I can tell who's going to do most of the work on this project already. <laughs> now, the first step is to remove all the old suspension hardware, but before you do, make sure your car is firmly supported on jack stands. First, we remove the sway bar so we can use our transmission jack to support the rear end. Then we remove the track bar, followed by both shocks, and finally the springs. Well, now we can swap out our control arms, and here's a little tip for you. Instead of taking both the old ones off at the same time, what you want to do is take one off, put on the replacement, and repeat on the other side. That way, you'll make sure to keep your rear end in its proper position. Man, that's a great tip. Now, I brought in the replacement control arm here, but before we install it, let me show you the difference between the two. The original is just a flimsy stamp steel piece, and down here, it's got a rubber bushing. Now, this thing's going to flex and flop around on hard cornering. The Edelbrock piece, on the other hand, is made from steel square tubing, and it's fitted with these urethane bushings. Now, I got to tell you, this thing's going to go a long ways towards keeping this Firebird here on its flight plan. Our new springs have a progressive rate engineered in by winding the tops tighter than the bottom, even tighter than our stock ones. That means under normal driving conditions, the lower part compresses for a more compliant ride. Then the more aggressively you drive, well, this whole thing compresses until the tighter part takes over. That means you get the best of both worlds, a smooth ride when you're out cruising, a firmer ride when you hit those corners. And here's something else that'll make a difference when you're hitting those corners. Our replacement track bar is much more rigid than the original. It's made from tubular steel with the urethane end bushing. Now, once it's in place, we can go ahead and bolt up our Bilsteins. Now, before you slide your new springs home, don't forget to reinstall this rubber isolator. It'll keep them from squeaking and give you the proper ride height. The final piece in our rear suspension puzzle is this sway bar that we got from PST. Now it's over 30% larger than the stocker to eliminate body roll and it's gold cad plated to resist corrosion. Plus, I just like the way it looks. 
Here's something else I want to share with you. These urethane bushings here don't deflect nearly as much as these rubber stockers, and by just adding a set of these urethane bushed end links to your stock sway bar, you'll immediately notice the difference. Here's something else that's going to make a big difference. Check this out. Not only do these 17 inchers look cool, but this shorter sidewall here is going to flex a whole lot less. And this wider tread, man, that's really going to plant the power. Now, we've mounted these Goodyear F1s on Krager's updated version of their classic SS rim. There you go, partner. Thanks, Joe. Now, we're running 285s on some 9 inch rims out back here and up front. Well, we're going to use 255s on some 8 inchers. Now, to make it all work with this deep offset on this rim, you're going to have to install a 1 inch spacer here and massage this area here with a hammer just to give us the clearance that we need. Now, all this flash did cost us some pretty serious cash, but trust me, we're still going to come in under budget. Well, that puts the wraps on the rear suspension. We'll tackle the front end and show you a low buck upgrade for the brakes right after this. Later in the show, a high-tech, low-cost way to decorate your ride that lets you peel away a masterpiece. Welcome back to the shop and the suspension upgrade on our Project Low Budget Bird. Now, before we can start bolting on any handling hardware, we first have to disassemble the front suspension, and that requires a couple of special tools like a pickle fork and a spring compressor. We'll put that pickle fork to work first, separating our tie rod ends. To do this, first remove the cotter pin, then the castellated nut. Loosen the lower ball joint nuts, but not all the way. Now, the spring tension will make them easier to pop loose from the spindle. Once the ball joints are loose, we're ready for the spring compressor. Now, these arms hook over the coils, and you compress the spring by tightening this nut. It just goes in through the bottom of the control arm like this. I like to use an impact wrench to speed things up. Next, we can disconnect our sway bar end links and remove our calipers. Tie the caliper up out of the way with a piece of strong wire like this coat hanger here, but whatever you do, don't let it hang by this brake hose or you'll be looking at a leak later on. With a jack under the lower control arm for added safety, we go inside the engine compartment to loosen the upper shock mount. Then remove the nut from the lower ball joint compress the shock, and pull it and the spindle out as an assembly. There we go. Now, this old Firebird's got well over 100,000 miles on it, so we're going to replace the worn-out ball joints and bushings. And since we don't have a press here in the shop, I'm going to take them to a machine shop down the street. We decided to install some new gas shocks up front, too, so we need to separate the old shocks from the spindles. We do that by removing a couple of bolts here. Well, now that we got everything apart, we can start on our brake upgrade. We got these slotted rotors and carbon metallic pads from Master Power Brakes. As you may know, heavy braking causes a gas that prevents the pads from fully contacting the rotors. These slots here allow that gas to escape, so you brake a lot more efficiently. While I was out dropping off the control arms, I swung by the parts store on my way back and picked up a new set of wheel bearings and seals. There you go. Thanks, Joe. Now, don't forget to repack them with grease before you install them. Now we're ready to install our new rotor. We'll just drop it in place over the spindle, like that. Add the outer wheel bearing, wheel bearing retainer washer, and the spindle nut. Here's a trick that'll help you get the right bearing load. Now, what I like to do is go ahead and spin the rotor while I tighten up on the wheel spindle nut. Then once I get rid of all the slack, I just back it off to the next castellation and insert the cotter pin. 
Well, tell you what, while Chuck finishes up on those rotors, I can get started putting things back together, beginning with these control arms. Now, with our new urethane bushings and ball joints to get rid of the sloth, tell you what, this Firebird's going to grip the road like a pit bull on a postman's leg. Then the new springs go in, and with a jack to hold the lower control arm in place, install the shock and spindle assembly. Tighten the ball joint nuts, then connect the tie rod ends. And remember to torque all the fasteners to factory specs. Before we move on, we've got to reinstall the caliper with our new brake pads. There we go. Then we can get the bird up in the air and swap out that sway bar. This old Firebird's already got a pretty hefty sway bar on it already, but our new one's even bigger. What do you say we check out the difference? This new bar we got from PST is a full inch and a quarter in diameter, about 20% larger than the original. That's going to help keep that Firebird flat in the corners. Or like the bar we put out back, this one uses urethane inlinks too. Believe it or not, we're finally finished with the underpinnings and then we can put this thing back on the ground, but just wait till you see what else we've got in store. With all the sticky rubber and performance suspension we've added, we're going to stress the body of this car like the GM engineers never planned for. And these strut towers here where they can really flex under high lateral loads. Yeah, but I've got just the fix for that. It's this strut tower brace from Edelbrock. And it goes in here just like this. Now, it's going to triangulate those strut towers with the firewall. And Joe, if you'll get me the drill, we'll get started on this. Well, all right. Final phase of this project's a done deal. Hey, what do you say we take this bird out and see how it flies? Hey, let's go. And I tell you what, this car was no turkey before the project, but I think we turned it into a high-profile flyer. How are we doing on our budget? Well, after the high-tech tune-up, the exhaust system upgrades, new wheels, tires, and suspension, and yeah. hey, we even added better brakes, we only spent about $4,800, well under our budget. And I tell you what, I think you've still got enough money in your pocket to buy me a good supper. Oh, man, I'd love to, but we got more show to do. We'll meet you back at the shop right after this. Next, a low-buck beauty treatment for your car or truck with vinyl graphics. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the shop. While most of the modifications we do here are high-performance enhancements, well, looking good is also part of the lifestyle. Now, the paint job on this Pontiac is an eyeful to be sure, but you don't have to spend a fortune on graphics just to grab someone's attention. Take this flame job, for instance. No, I'll tell you what, you take it. It'll look great on your refrigerator. <laughs> Seriously, though, these magnetic fast flames are a pretty good idea for cruise night from a company called Magnificent Impressions. Just one example of a quick, easy, economical way to personalize your pavement pounder. Yeah, but we found a way that's even more permanent and gives you almost unlimited options. Now, for years, computers have been used in cars. Now they're used outside of cars to generate high-tech graphics. Meet Mike Russell, who runs a shop called Street Visions in Lebanon, Tennessee. He begins each okay. vinyl graphic masterpiece with a digital photo. That's what we need to work with. Mike imports the picture to his computer, where it becomes a canvas where he can control the size, shape, and color of the graphic, which has endless possibilities. Different segments of the graphic can be altered. Uh, they can be custom tailored to fit the car just exactly like uh, you want them to fit. Once we're happy with the style, colors, and size, Mike makes one for the other side. And we just go back in here as if we were gonna scale it, and we mirror it, we flip it. Then technology takes over again as this machine cuts the colored vinyl patterns to exact specs. We're going to take the material loose from here that we don't need. And hopefully, if I watch what I'm doing, we'll end up with our design that we're going to use. 
Of course, a lot of the shops that make these, like Street Vision, will put them on for you, but you can get them in the mail, and, well, that leaves it up to you to lay them on. It's pretty easy, really. You just take a bucket with about a gallon of water in it, then you add a cap full of dish soap. Now, that's going to give you the lubrication that you need so that you can kind of move that graphic around. Then, add about the same amount of alcohol. Now, that's going to help that solution evaporate once you get that graphic in place. Well, you'll also need a spray bottle to apply the solution, a razor blade for trimming, and a squeegee to work out the bubbles. Well, let's get to work on this truck. After cleaning the work surface, put the graphic up for a test positioning. Once you're happy with that location, make your slits at the door openings. Then soak the area with solution. Peel off the paper backing and smooth it into place. Now you're ready to work the bubbles out with a squeegee working from the center toward the edges. Finally, peel off the transfer paper. Well, that was fairly painless and sure gave this S10 a brand new personality. Yeah, it did. And with the new generation of vinyl plus the UV coatings, man, those graphics are gonna look good for years to come. Yeah, the hardest part of this project may be making up your mind which design's right for you. But well, we got some more stuff that's right for you after this. We've shown you these cool cutaways on the show before. In fact, this is a Turbo 350 transmission. And over here, we've got a small block Chevy. Now, they're great for showing the internal workings of engines and transmissions. And while these colors might look cool, well, they're also helpful for showing the locations of things like the cooling system, the intake track, and even the oil passages. We got these from Wyoming Technical Institute in Laramie, Wyoming where a special department stays busy slicing and dicing all kinds of car components to use as teaching aids. While we were out there, we took a look around and checked out Wiles' approach to higher education in horsepower and their curriculum in car crafting. It's a simple fact. A nation with 140 million cars and trucks getting more technically complex every year needs a special breed of technician one who's trained to handle the changes and challenges of a new millennium. And everything's going to electronics. And we try to stay abreast uh, as currently as we possibly can with the electronic age. For cutting edge automotive schools like Wyoming Tech, meeting the future head on represents an enormous investment in ever changing up to date equipment and the most qualified teachers possible. Yeah. Whether it's that, diagnosing and repairing late model cars, working on diesel engines, fixing fender benders, custom refinishing, or even building street rides. You can't learn what you need in your brother-in-law's garage anymore. It takes hands-on, state-of-the-industry education. At this one school alone, many thousands have discovered that a little time and a lot of hard work can lead to a fantastic future in a field that's no more just a daily grind. There's jobs out there. It's incredible. Horsepower's Hot Parts, brought to you by Summit Racing Equipment, your source for high-performance parts for 30 years. Well, here's a breath of fresh air, for your street machine, that is. If yours is running a carburetor or throttle body injection, you can feed it a cooler, denser charge with this Ram Air box from Air Inlet Systems. Now, the fiberglass housing comes in a bunch of different sizes and, of course, features these dual snorkels for maximum flow. You just add the hoses and optional under-the-bumper inlets for a bump in horsepower. Oh, and breathe easy, prices start at under $100. Of course, all the air in the world won't do you any good if your carb can't mix your fuel properly. So here's the solution. It's a super rebuild kit from Quick Fuel Technologies, and it contains all the clips, retainers, and hardware that you need to overhaul your holly. Plus, these nonstick gaskets have been treated with a special release agent that resists heat and fuel degradation, so they're reusable. And at 62 bucks for the kit, well, it's only about a third of what a new carb would cost you. We all know the value of oil filters and air filters, but have you ever thought about a filter for your cooling system? Well, this one from Mr. Gasket will keep your coolant clean and your radiator passages unclogged. 
It's made from billet aluminum and has a removable screen here for easy cleaning. But it won't clean out your wallet. You can get one for a cool 40 cucumbers. <laughs> Man, that sounds like a heck of a deal. But I don't know if it's kosher. What do you say we take a look at next week's show? Chuck's grocery getter got sick. We'll rebuild his 454 big block first with a trip to the machine shop, then in our own shop with a high-performance rebuild kit. Finally, we'll fire it up on our live engine test stand. Plus some horsepower TV mishaps when we share some scenes that were saved from Son the cutting room floor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and remember, high-performance fun is what this show is all about. I love this flame job on the Grand Prix. Really knocks me out. I wonder if we could uh, try one on my car next Man, week. I'll knock you out before we put a flame job on your car. Horsepower TV is an RTM production. <laughs>